How did you start your clothing line? I started it when I was 16. I just got here three days ago. <laughs> you know, being bisexual or whatnot. Thank you for making my story about you. You're welcome. It's fine. I know that's right. What's up? How you been? Good oh, yeah. to see you. Ooh, my shoulder. Damn, you strong. You don't lift your waist? I mean, you know, <laughs> it's trying to catch up with you. Whatever. You know, I just got off of work. Oh, shit. You still in the Army? Yeah. You know, I'm G.I. Joe part-time. <laughs> How is it being in the Army? Like, when did you first start? Um, I joined the military when I was 18, like, right after high school. Because okay. I was like, I didn't really know what I wanted to go to college for because I really wasn't passionate about anything other than art. Yeah. And my mom told me, like, if you go to college for art, you're going to end up being, like, an art teacher and you're going to make, like, 30 grand a year. And I was like, well, I don't want to do anything else. And the military was like, well, you can just come with us. You can mm -hmm. give us four years of your life, and then you got four years to figure it out, and then we'll pay for your college when you get out. And I was like, that don't sound like a bad idea. And how many years has it been so far? It's been eight. Eight. So you're, what, 26 now? <laughs> yep. Okay, okay. Well, ain't nothing wrong with that. And then you also do fashion, right? Mm -hmm. So I started designing, like, I was still designing in high school, but yeah. I used the money that I made in the military to kind of, like, fund my collections and stuff. I dropped my first mm -hmm. real collection, I want to say, like, after four years. Mm -hmm. Like, I just dropped it, and I put it on Twitter, and it, like, went viral, and the rest is, like, history. Oh, shit. How was it like for you in the beginning? Like, was everybody supporting you or was it like a slow progression? Um, absolutely not. I'm from Chicago and like everybody there is kind of like super close minded. Everybody knows one thing. And like mm -hmm. the, the, the type of stuff I design is very out of the box um, yeah. from where like what I grew up in. So like when I first started off, like Chicago was not fuck with me like that. Like they really weren't. They was like, what the fuck is this? Like, this is so loud. Like nobody's going to wear this. Like right. I feel like true creatives like don't create for other people. Mm -hmm. Real musicians don't make songs that they think people will like that's catchy, that's trendy. You know, they just create from the heart. Yeah. And that's what I did. And I just did that and I put it on Twitter and it went viral. So a lot of people liked it. And then once they saw everybody else liked it, mm -hmm. then Chicago was like, oh, you know, I, you know, I always supported you. Like, OK. But did they really? No. Did but, they? you know, that's how it goes. Was there ever like any like big celebrity that was like, oh, yeah, I support you. Let me fuck with you. And then yeah. they was like, let me mess with you. But then they changed their mind. Um, oh, my God. Yeah, that actually mm -hmm. did happen. Um, I designed for this rapper in Chicago. I'm not going to say his name because I don't want to be on the blog. No, but like I, I designed for him and I was actually supposed to be in one of his music videos. Okay. And then like, I don't know, somewhere throughout the process, like towards the end, like when I was like finishing up the design, I decided to come out. I don't know why. I just was like, fuck it. And he don't follow me like the next week. I was like, oh my God. So then I, I had his manager's number. So I yeah. texted him and I was like, I'm not still doing this. And he was like, no. Your brand doesn't really align with his anymore, and that was the only that's the last thing he said. So I kind of figured like what that meant. What kind of clothes is he wearing? You know, like things you see what a dude wearing in like a gas station with his pants sagging. Oh, okay. I wonder yeah. where he is today. It's okay. <laughs> You're still successful, mm -hmm. and I love that for you. Now, when you were coming out, how was that process for you? Um, Cause I'm still new, I'm still new to this. I just got here three days ago. <laughs> you know, being bisexual or whatnot. Uh, but, oh my know. god, it was it was a journey. I yeah. don't know. Like a lot of my family wasn't really on board with it until mm. I kind of forced them to. Like mm. when you just come out and say like this is who I am. Like yeah. even though people some people might not like it, if you own who you are and you let everybody know, like either take me or leave me. Like I'm not gonna change whether you like it or not. They have right. no choice but to like follow suit. How was it like with your mom and your dad? Like, what was their reaction? Well, my dad was invisible most of my life. Like, he went okay. to go get, like, um, milk from the grocery store, and he just never came back. But my mom was, like, kind of upset. Mm -hmm. But, like I said, she came around. She did? Yeah. I'm my only child, so it's like, if I don't have kids, like, our name dies. So she, that, that was her biggest thing. She's like, am I, am I never going to have grandkids? Yeah. She probably won't. I don't know. We'll you think see. you'll ever have kids? I don't know. I'm still thinking about it. I don't really know how that's going to work. I, you yeah. know, like, um... Okay, so imagine like you grew up and yeah, yeah. your whole life it was taught like eat apples, oranges mm. are terrible for you. Like don't eat oranges, you will die. So you've been go your whole. I life, never heard of no shit from like you that. know, and but you, been, you go your whole life eating apples, right? And then like okay. you become an adult and you move away from your hometown and you think oranges really aren't that bad. These people were telling me that I can't eat them, but I actually can. Yeah. I'm kind of in that era. Like I'm just indulging in oranges right now, but I'm I'm mm. coming to find out that I really don't like them that much. So I might go back to apples soon. I mean, there's nothing wrong with it. I thought about it a couple of times, too. But I remember when I came out to my mom, it was on her birthday at a birthday dinner. 
And it was me, her, and my little brother, and I made my little brother go in the bathroom and wash his you hands. You did that during her birthday dinner? She's fine. That's so crazy. It's okay. <laughs> I mean, I did. I was like, okay, I have something to tell y'all. And she was like, okay, what is it? And I was like, I want to let you know, like, you know, in terms of, like, my dating life, like, I'm figuring it out. And I'm attracted to both men and women. She was like, oh, okay, well, love is where you find it, and that's all that matters. You're still going to be my son. I was like... That's beautiful. I was like, I know that's right. You could have waited until after her birthday, though. That's insane. It was the last day of my vacation visiting oh. Indiana. I was like, okay, I've been holding off. <laughs> what am I going to do? Like, how am I going to get this out? I'm glad she responded well. Like, what if she would have passed out, like Mama Dean? If she would have passed out, I would have just... Well, I can't take it back. So <laughs> it's like, you're just going to pass out for no reason. You'll be all right. I'm screaming. You'll wake up. Yo, y'all got any love? Nigga. Excuse me, my bad. Well, is it your bad, motherfucker? Well, damn, I said, excuse me, my bad. Well, I never, and when well, I Well, hi, damn, I done found what the fuck I done came up in here for. Excuse me. All right. Excuse me. Bruh. Hello? What's up, y'all? So I'm out here at the store, right? Getting some, uh, personal. Hygiene things. This motherfucker back here is sleep on a job. Then Miss Mama is back over here talking uh, shit to me. Talk you know you shouldn't be recording me, right? You'll be all right. But like I was saying, I came to get some things. Maybe I got some this nigga myself. over here getting hair powder, C4 energy, and a douche. Oh. Yeah, personal hygiene, all right. At least I got some work. Oh, and they making you buy for everything? Hmm. Hey, man. Cash and credit. Hello, cash your credit. Cash it. How did you start your clothing line? I started it when I was 16. Okay. It's a really funny story. So okay. I played football like all my life, right? Because, well, not all my life. That's so dramatic. I started in seventh grade. <laughs> I joined football because my mother told me all boys play sports. That's something mm -hmm. that boys are supposed to do. So I joined the football team. I was doing the football thing for a while. I really hated it. Like, I hated mm -hmm. football so bad. Yeah. Everybody was bigger than me. Like, I, I, it was just terrible. I was getting beat the fuck up every day. <gasps> not actually beat up. I'm talking about like on the field. Like, they were just tackling the shit out of me. Oh. So I was like, um, I was walking down this um, hallway one day and I seen this flyer on the wall for the drama club. And it was like, my school was like in the hood. You know how mm. like normal schools have like different clubs for like art and yeah. like fashion. And like, yeah. it was just one big club for creatives. They're like, are you creative? Do you like to do that? And I was like, right. you know what? Like, yeah, because I used to doodle in my, you know, in my notebooks and stuff. You so know, I, wait, you know what I used to do when yeah. I would doodle? Like we had a planner you used to get like every year and I used to like, I used to doodle rainbows in the front part that sees through the cover. Why was you doing that? I think I was telling on myself and I didn't know what I was doing. Oh, so okay. You, that's so it's like psychologically <laughs> in my mind. Now that you say that, I'm like, I used to Just do that drawing shit. Just rainbows is crazy. I was doing it. <laughs> but yeah, anyway. <laughs> thank you for making my story about you. You're welcome. It's fine. Um, it's okay. But, um, damn, you mind me losing my train of thought. Oh, so it was one club for, yeah. like, all, all things. And I mm -hmm. joined it just because I liked to sketch. And there was a dude there. Mm -hmm. He he loved to sew. Uh -oh. And I was like, oh, this actually seems, like, really cool. Like, can you teach me? And he taught me. And I fell in love with it. And I was doing it since 16. And mm -hmm. then I went home, and I had to tell my mom, I'm like, I'm quitting football because I want to join the drama club. And mm -hmm. she was so mad. She was like, if you quit the football team to to do drama club, like, they're gonna bully you and they, they're gonna say that you're, they, everybody's gonna think that you're gay. I'm yeah. like, okay. And she never, she was like, okay, well, if you like it, I love it, I guess. But she never went to any of my my plays. She didn't support anything that I did, like, creates. Cause she was mm. just kind of like salty cause she wanted me to be like, you know, like, I guess like every mother has an idea of like right. what their son is supposed to be like. And I guess mm -hmm. I just didn't really fit the mold and she didn't really know how to like handle that. Did you ever like bring any girls home? Um, I did. 
every blue moon. Yeah. I mean, I wasn't bringing guys home, but like. Well, she I probably had... would have passed out. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, she yeah. got over it. Um, when I dropped my first like super successful collection, like she was all for it. So recently you did a line with Choice Brown. Mm -hmm. How did that come about? Okay, so remember when I told you like I was supposed to design for that rapper dude and he like yeah. flaked on me because like I kiss boys. Um, <laughs> literally, I was like spiraling, like I was so sad. And yeah. I was just on Twitter and I was scrolling and I like seen one of her pictures mm -hmm. and I was like, oh my God, like who is this? She's so pretty. Yeah. And I was going through all of her, um, I was going through all of her pictures and I was just like, I don't know, I kind of just got really inspired. And I was just like, yeah. if I were to design for her, this yeah. is probably what I would do. Like this I would is the pick vibe. Yeah, like I yeah, would pick yeah. a fabric that kind of like complements her skin tone or whatever. Mm -hmm. And I was liking her pictures and she actually started liking some of mine back. I still talk to her about to this about this I'm day. Sure you I, was like, in a DM. I was like, what you like about pictures? Cause you thought I was cuter because she whatever, we ain't even gonna get there. But what's it's it okay. called? It? I slid in her DM because her DMs are open. And I was like, mm -hmm. hey, I think you're really gorgeous. I, you know, I'm a designer and like I would really love to work with you. Yeah. And she was like, okay, cool. And I started sketching. I sent it to her and she was like, I like this. So I designed it, I sent it to her. The intention was not to sell it. It was just like, I thought she was really pretty. I wanted to use her as like a muse. Mm -hmm. And I designed for her, I sent her the collection and she really liked it. She was like, no Malik, like we should put this out. Right. And then I was like, are you serious? She was like, yeah. So I called her and we got on the phone and we decided to drop it as a collab. It was such mm -hmm. a good experience. I got to meet her mom. Have yeah. you ever met somebody and it was just kind of like, you could tell like they were somebody. Like you could tell that they were like special. The presence, the Yeah, energy. like when I yeah, met yeah, Tabitha, yeah. it was kind of just like, whoa. Like her like her vibe is just like so strong. And she gave me one of her books, oh. which was really helpful because like that book actually really did help me out. Cause like mm -hmm. I said, like I was in Spiral Era that season. It was really good. <laughs> but we dropped the collection. Um, of course, everybody liked it. Yeah. Um, Cause you know, the Brown family is just a huge blessing. Like Absolutely. they're loved by so many people. So, you know, just having the opportunity to like combine my brand with hers mm -hmm. was just like an experience that I'll always be grateful for. Aww. So yeah, we sold out like three months business and started to pick that shit up and everything. Okay, and you also went to Fashion Week as well. Yeah, I did. So when I went to Fashion Week, I didn't present that collection. Um, so during that era, like I was going through like a really mm -hmm. weird breakup, but like when I was with this guy, we watched a show called uh, Manifest. I don't know if you've seen it. it I love like, Manifest. Yeah, like, these people get stuck in space. I got really fixated on like the idea of space like during that time period. Yeah, so yeah. I designed a whole collection like inspired by different planets and stuff. And mm -hmm. that was my Fashion Week debut. There's a, um, a company called Flying Solo. They mm -hmm. recruit like 60 to 70 designers from around the world. And they mm -hmm. put us in like one big fashion show. Like mm -hmm. one designer shows the stuff, that models come in, change, and then put on the next thing, and there's like in and out, in and out, in and out, and out. Like 60, 60 or 70 designers. So I was like, I wanted to do something that kind of like stood out. Like right. I wanted it to be different. Right. And that's what I did. And then when I put the collection out, the audience was like, you were the you were the designer with the space collection, right? And like yeah. everybody kept saying it. I got featured in um Harper's Bazaar. Mm. I got it featured in like I got like four or five publications from that. It was like really good. So oh, I had, like shit. I had a vision, I okay. executed it, I wanted to stand down, that's what I did. It was cool. Did, and Choice was there. She was front row. She was? Mm -hmm. Did she walk in the show? No. I wanted her to walk in the show, but yeah. like, she's like, I'm not a runway model. Like, she yeah. was like, I'm more print. I tried to talk her up to it, but she was like, mm -hmm. maybe next time. Well. There that, may be a Choice Brown runway moment with McIntyre. That could be future. cute. It would be cute. What do you have coming up next with, like, the fashion side? Um, so I actually got invited to do Paris Fashion Week mm. and I was supposed to do it, but you know, I'm still in the military right. and the military, you need like permission from 10 fucking people to go to the next state, let alone like another country. How much longer you got to get out of it? Um, I got two more months, you know? So uh, when I put the request in, you know, mm. I got the invite super last minute. I guess right. it was too like late for me to get permission to do it. Mm. So I couldn't do it. But, um, when I got out of the military, I'm definitely going to take the opportunity. They said the invite is open. So whenever I'm ready, like I can do it. Yeah. The inspiration for that collection was, um, Chicago inspired because okay. I feel like when you think about Chicago, everybody thinks about like the gun violence, people mm. dying. People don't really look to Chicago for creativity or art, but that's like home of some of the best creativity and art. Yeah, like there's yeah, more to yeah. Chicago than just fucking shooting people and like Chief Keith and shit. So like I wanted to design a collection <laughs> that kind of like, you know, like embody like what Chicago should be known for instead of what it's actually known for. Absolutely, I fuck with that. And to do that in Paris is kind of iconic. I don't know. I mean, it's an era. You know? The Paris era. <laughs> so yeah, hopefully next year. That Sometimes. could be cute. Mm -hmm. I might have to come out there and support you and shit. You should. I've never been to Paris myself. So. Mm, tax time is coming around. <laughs> <laughs> so that could be what's up. Absolutely. All right, nigga. <laughs> See you later. All right, peace out. <laughs>